Hi, so if you watched video 1007, we made a uh, McKibben pneumatic muscle out of a balloon and a Satsuma bag. Now, the balloon we used was this one. It's one of those punch balloons. You blow it open, you're able to give it a good old punch. And I got that because it's quite a bit thicker and I thought it would be quite robust. But it is quite long. Now, when we put our balloon inside of our bag, then we had this amount of distance. As the balloon increased the size, this could pull up, and that's the length of the contraction that we got. Now, normally with McKibben muscles, what they use is this braided sleeve, because it's quite tough stuff. Now, you stick a little bit of this in it, which is silicon tube, put a lot of pressure in, and of course, as it broadens out, it contracts. The limitation of it is actually the contraction length. It won't contract that much. This had quite a lot of contraction, and you can see that way, because we had quite a lot of length, about a third of the length. But it occurred to me that it might be an idea to look at moving the actuator right up to the top here. So as that balloon increases, this spare bit of bag is able to travel and expand, and we should get greater contraction. So I've taken a different kind of balloon. This is one of your normal party balloons like that, and I've put it back onto a connector. I'm going to feed that into one of those Satsuma bags, tape it up, and a couple of um, zip ties on it to hold it tight. So I've got it set up in the same experimental apparatus that we used in 1007, and if we can compare it, then you can see that the balloon occupies very much less area than when we used this balloon. Now I'm working on the theory of your own muscles. If you bunch your muscles up, you'll see the bicep actually goes here, and the rest of this is tendon. So I'm looking at this as being tendon, and this as being the bicep to bunch up the top. And what we're hoping for is a greater degree of contraction. So let's give it a go. It certainly works as a muscle. Now let's compare the contraction. Here's my original balloon muscle. Okay, I can tell you that gives about a 20% contraction. When the balloon is actually smaller and higher up the top, we get a 30% contraction. That's quite a lot of contraction, actually. Um, and it seems to suggest that I'm on the right track. In order to improve these muscles, what we need to do is concentrate with the expansion at the top here and deal with that bit as being a tendon, just like in your own muscles. With the uh, McKibben muscles, the whole area is allowed to expand and then it contracts because the whole tube is expanding. And I think if we want to improve the contraction on McKibben muscles, we need to concentrate that expansion at the top of the muscle, allowing the bottom of the muscle to act like a tendon. I mean, there are obviously limitations with uh, what I did here because we're using household balloons. And you might have noticed I was squinting a bit when I blew that one up because I wasn't sure it was going to pop or not. Because as you blow it up and these triangles open, a little bit of the rubber gets poked through. So there's going to be some wear and tear on that. So what we need to do is improve the quality of the balloon in here, or a slide covering or something like that. But it certainly seems a way forward to improving contraction of the gibbon muscles is to concentrate the expansion at the top of the muscle and not allow the expansion to occur across the whole length of the muscle. Anyway, a couple of quick experiments. I thought it was really interesting. I hope you enjoyed the videos too, and thank you very much for watching.